Hi, I'm Bill Graves, President and CEO of the American Trucking Associations, and I'm joined today by our Chief Economist, Bob Costello. Bob and I just returned from a, a fabulous, very uh, entertaining and educational trip to Panama, where we uh, were able to look at the expansion of the Panama Canal and, and get some educational briefings, policy briefings on the implications for uh, the canal expansion relative to freight movement in the U.S. And so I guess, Bob, the, the, the principal question is, is what impact is the expansion of the Panama Canal going to have on freight movement here in the U.S.? Well, once we you know, went down there and saw the, uh, the locks being built and learned about how much big, larger these ships are going to be, I think it is going to have a big impact. Um, but it'll be something that'll take time. It'll gradually happen. And I think at the very beginning, uh, a lot more of the bulk ships can go from the Gulf Coast or, you know, through the canal over to Asia. And of course, we're shipping more and more commodities to Asia these days. Uh, but eventually, you're going to see more container units come from Asia through the canal into the East Coast. And so we need to make sure that the infrastructure is there, ready, the ports, the, the highways, and I think it'll be significant eventually. Yeah, you know, I agree. We, we seem to have a number of people who, who some say there might not be much impact at all, uh, you know, others are unsure. And I probably come down on the side of someone who thinks there's definitely going to be an uh, impact on container movements through our East Coast ports. Now, I found it interesting, Bob, in our meeting with the authority, the, the, the Canal Port Authority, they had a specific interest in U.S. Uh, energy policy and the potential for uh, natural gas exports from right. the U.S. Do you want to comment on that? Yeah, they, that was interesting because they talked about the bulk commodities, chemicals and grain and how much of that, but they, they specifically mentioned that their number four commodity is LNG and CNG and they were very intrigued with all the fracking going on in the U.S. and they, I, I agree, they think that there's going to be a lot more exports of of natural gas going through the canal and over to Asia. And uh, I have to say, with the growth we've seen in energy in this country, I think they're, they're looking in the right area. I think that's, that's probably correct. Now, the other thing that I thought was interesting to discover uh, was that even though this is uh, an expansion project that's underway today, there were, will still be ships uh, in this world who won't be able to pass through the Panama Canal. Yeah, you know, of course, they're building larger and larger ones, although they did say today, the way it stands today, about 98% of ships can, can get through the canal. Now, of course, they keep building them larger, and so it's, you know, they're already behind the curve, I guess, a little bit. Uh, and it was also interesting that they said that they're, in terms of the number of ships, only what? two, three, four more ships a day will be going through, even with the new set of locks. However, the ships are going to be much larger, so the number of containers, the amount of freight going through will be significantly larger, but the number of ships will not grow that much. Yeah, and I think the other thing, we all know that the, the Panama Canal is, is you know, of critical importance to the flow of, of, of commerce in this world, but you tend to probably not appreciate how significant it is to Panama and to their quality of life and to jobs because it's a country that really has a, a, a huge disparity between the, the haves and the have-nots and, and clearly this means a lot to them in terms of jobs and the revenue they generate by uh, I guess charging each container or the equivalency of a container that moves through the canal. Yeah, of course we saw the two spectrums as we were going around the country and no doubt about that. Yeah, and I was also taken back, to be honest with you, about how much it costs to go through the canal. It was, it was significantly more than I thought. But it makes sense because, what did they say, 15 days to go around South America and come up. So, you know, that's a lot of fuel used. It's, a, you know, a lot of hours. So uh, it makes sense. Yeah, it, the, 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 the Panamanian people will benefit significantly, and that's why they agreed to, to do this and spend a lot of country money as well as, you know, other people chipping in to do it. We had a great trip. We had our chairman, Phil Bird, from Bulldog Highway Express, leading the delegation. Uh, Dwayne Long, Long Logistics from Raleigh, North yeah. Carolina, uh, Dave Manning, Tennessee Express as a part of the delegation, Pat Thomas from UPS, Bob, uh, our, our cross-border uh, policy expert, Martin Rojas, and the uh, uh, publisher of our transport topics uh, group, uh, Jeff Mason. So it was a great delegation, a great trip, and I know you all are help be hearing more about it uh, in the days to come. Bob, thanks for, for sitting down and talking with me. Thanks.